And designed for the ripple effect, small acts can create big change. I just wanted to tell you a final story before I conclude. This is a story about me and my husband, Andy. That's me, that's Andy. Andy and I have big fights around technology. Andy is a tech geek. And uh, we're not really fights, like we'll say, you know, they'll will quibble, but they seem big. And uh, Andy loves technology, and I think technology is ridiculous. I think this is an important graph that we all need to think about. Um, <laughs> so you can imagine Andy's and my disagreement around this topic, among many topics, like how are we going to give back in the world? How are we going to raise our kids? Are we raising our kids right? And how are we spending our time? And these are the kinds of conversations we had until I was at Berkeley two years ago teaching a class on creativity and innovation. And um, I learned that no one remembers my talks. That's why I like you when you Twitter, because then I realize what people don't remember. So I put it out to my students and I said, listen, I don't know what you're going to learn from this talk. You'll probably, if, or this class, just tell me what you learned. And so one of my students, Robert Chatwani, who runs the social good here at eBay, um, said, listen, I'm going to give you um, a few PowerPoint documents. And so what Robert did was um, give me the following presentation, and I'm just going to silently walk you through this. Samir was his best friend, 32-year-old. Samir is on the lower left, and Vinay, another friend of theirs, is on the upper left. Samir was struck with leukemia. social change in a box. The idea of making it so easy to act was incredibly compelling. They had people that heard this story and created widgets even though they didn't know them. Individuals created videos. Celebrities in India created their own videos without even asking if they could help. Someone knew someone who knew Barack Obama asked him to write a letter. Uh, with the result in 12 weeks, 470 bone marrow drives, 24,000 people registered, 3,500 volunteers, a perfect match. Yeah, so you're watching this, right? And you're thinking, oh my God, my life has changed. Um, Samir shared his story from the hospital. He blogged about it constantly. He went through a bone marrow transplant and also video blogged about that. And the lessons they learned was the clarity of a goal and to act and then think to reverse these rules, to tell a story, to design for um, collaboration, to focus on allowing others to be empowered instead of asking if they can help. But he passed on within three months. It was too late. Um, 
And that's a picture of his wife, who they, oh, I cry every time. They, um, they only got married a year before that. And they celebra- celebrated his life by sharing his memorial through social media, and Vinny also relapsed. But what happened within that movement is really amazing. Um, 80 new matches were found based on that 24,000. 250 lives have potentially been saved just in the, la- in the year after that Samir and Vinay passed on. And they created essentially a movement that most revolutions are sparked by the actions of a few. Your biggest asset is a clear mind and a very large idea. To find the ignition point of a chain reaction and go ignite it. And so I'm sitting there going, oh my God, what do I do now? Could I water this idea? Would it grow? How would that make me feel? And all I can think about is happy. And so we took Robert's story as a PowerPoint document. We made it into a Stanford GSB class um, and a case. We taught a class on something we didn't know anything about. We decided to go to India, as May said, and tell a story. Um, We decided to create a goal of banking 100,000 people this summer and designing it for multiplier effects so that a small act could create a big change. And all I can feel is happy. So in conclusion, I wanted to wonder, are we commoditizing happiness? How are we measuring success? What are we teaching our kids? How might we redefine work? How might we rethink happiness? The goal is not to find happiness, but perhaps to create an environment that would enable happiness. I wanted to give um, respect and honor to all of the books and ideas that infiltrated this talk. Um, I'll share this deck with May. And I wanted just to take home this idea that it's not necessarily that this happiness is better than that happiness. It's that both are equally powerful. You just need to know when to rely on one versus the other. And in closing, I wanted to again quote Ariana Huffington, and we can move on now doing it all with more grace and balance and joy than others have done before us. So thank you very much for your time.